educational institutions may reopen on 12th September. Final decision in a meeting on 5th September. SSE exams to be held in November, HSC in December, says Education Minister. Country's economy to turn around and employment opportunities to be created with opening of three mega projects, Padda Bridge, Kondofili Tunnel and Metro Rail next year, comments economists. Remittance service Blaze opens in country. Remittances of expatriate Bangladesh is now coming to country within five seconds. Road Transport and Bridges Minister Obadul Kade inspects BRT construction work in Ghazipur. Public sufferings to end after this monsoon, he expects. Water level of Podda, Jomuna and Brahmaputra rivers continue to rise. Flood situation in Kurigram, Gaibantha, Jamalpur, Tangal and Shirajganj deteriorates. Country's corona positivity rate now more or less stable. Infection rate 10.76 in last 24 hours and number of deaths from coronavirus 17. 45 killed in the United States due to flash flood and tornadoes. And Bangladesh defeat New Zealand by four runs in second of five match T20 series. Assalamu alaikum, welcome to News at 10 on BTV, BTV World and BTV Chattogram Center. I am Roya Zabin. You have just heard the headlines and now news in details. Primary, secondary and higher secondary educational institutions are expected to reopen from 12th September. Education Minister Dr. Deepu Muni said this while speaking at a function in Chatpur today. Dr. Deepu Muni also said secondary school certificate, SSC and higher secondary school certificate, HSC examinations will be held in November and December respectively as per previous decision. Chuti Amdagoto Shabhai বর্ধিত করেছিলাম 11 সেপ্টেম্বর পর্যন্ত আমরা এখন আশা করছি যে আমরা 12 সেপ্টেম্বর থেকে আমাদের সকল শিক্ষা প্রতিষ্ঠান অর্থাৎ প্রাথমিক মাধ্যমিক এবং উচ্চ মাধ্যমিক আমরা খুলে দিতে পারবো ইনশাআল্লাহ বিশ্ববিদ্যালয়গুলোর ব্যাপারে আমরা আবারো বসব আমরা উপাচার্যদের সঙ্গে কথা বলেছিলাম তারা চেয়েছিলেন যে অন্ততপক্ষে সকল শিক্ষার্থী প্রথম ডোজ টিকা যদি নিয়ে নিতে পারে তাহলে ভালো হয় এবং সেজন্য আমরা একটা খোলার তারিখ নির্ধারণ করেছিলাম সেই অনুযায়ী অক্টোবরের মাঝামাঝি এখন ওনাদের সঙ্গে আবার কথা বলবো ওনারা যদি তার আগে অন্যান্য শিক্ষা প্রতিষ্ঠানের সঙ্গে একই সঙ্গে খুলতে রাজি হন খুলবেন কিংবা যদি ওনারা ভিন্ন কোনো তারিখ নির্ধারণ করেন সেটি ওনাদের বিষয় Special Security Force Bill 2021 was placed in the Jatiya Shongshud, aiming to bring the family members of the country's founding president, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, alongside the president and the prime minister of the country under lifelong security coverage of the force. Liberation War Affairs Minister A.K.M. Mozamil Hogg today placed the bill in the house with Speaker of the Jatiya Shongshud, Dr. Shirin Shermi Chaudhry, in the chair. Piloting the bill, the minister said the proposed bill has been placed for amending the previous Special Security Force Ordinance 1986. Three parliamentary standing committees have been reformed in the parliament today. On behalf of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, Chief Whip Nure Alam Chaudhry proposed the reform of the committee. Reformed committees are Committee on Government Assurances, Committee on Commerce Ministry and Ministry of Fisheries and Livestock. Muhammad Muslimuddin has been made new chairman of Government Assurances Committee because of demise of Professor Ali Ashraf, who was the previous chairman. Besides, reports of different standing committees were presented in the parliament today. The sitting of the parliament session has been adjourned till 11 in the morning tomorrow. Road Transport and Bridges Minister Obadul Kade has visited the latest work progress of Greater Dhaka Sustainable Urban Transport Project BRT Ghazipur Airport Road at Chera Gali of Ghazipur this morning. During his visit, the Road Transport and Bridges Minister said a 4.5 kilometer long elevated road 
six flyovers, 25 BRT stations and 20.05 km long corridor will be built under the Bus Rapid Transit BRT project. Work of the project will finish in December 2022, the minister said. Bang Obadul Kader said once completed, 20,000 people can move per hour in both the sides of the project. <laughs> বর্ষাকালে ভোগান্তিটা চরমে পৌঁছেছে আমি আশা করি ভোগান্তির শেষ বর্ষা এটাই এবার চলে গেছে এই বর্ষার পর আর নিচের দিকে তেমন কোনো কাজ নেই তাতে ভোগান্তির দিনগুলোর অবসান হবে এটাই আমি আশা করছি আমাদের কাজের সার্বিক অগ্রগতি তেষট্টি দশমিক দুই সাত শতাংশ আমরা আশা করছি অনেক আকাঙ্ক্ষিত বহু প্রত্যাশিত শেখ হাসিনার অন্যতম মেগা প্রকল্প আগামী বছর পদ্মা সেতু মেট্রো রেল চট্টগ্রামে বঙ্গবন্ধু শেখ মুজিবুর রহমান কর্ণফুলি টানেল এর সঙ্গে আগামী বছর আমাদের এই প্রজেক্ট ডিআরটি প্রজেক্টের কাজও মাননীয় প্রধানমন্ত্রী শুভ উদ্বোধন করতে পারবেন Later, the Road Transport and Bridges Minister exchanged views with the officials and employees of the project at the project office. Roads and Highways Division Secretary Mohammad Nasrul Islam, Bridge Division Secretary Abu Bakr Siddiq, Roads and Highways Department Chief Engineer Abdul Sabur were present at that time. Expatriate Bangladeshis can now send remittances in just five seconds. The state-run Shonali Bank has introduced a service titled Blaze to facilitate expatriates so that they can send money quickly. Earlier, it would take two to three days to reach remittances in the country. This service is an outcome of the digital Bangladesh, which was kicked off by the Awamili government after coming into power in 2009. According to Shonali Bank, the Blaze service will be in force round the clock 365 days a year. Expatriates will be able to send up to Taka 5 lakh in every transaction. They will get 2% incentives with their amounts, according to the managing director of Shonali Bank. At the moment, the service is available at 35 banks alongside the QCash mobile banking and it will be expanded in phases. Bangladesh Bank says the Blaze service will help expatriate Bangladeshis send money in legal channels. The economy of the country will bounce back around July next year due to implementation of mega projects including Podda Shetu, Kornofuli Tunnel and Metro Rail, crea creating sustainable employment opportunities, economists told BTV. Economy of most rich nations across the world, including the United States and United Kingdom, has been jeopardized due to the coronavirus pandemic. Economists say Bangladesh didn't experience the concussions of the pandemic largely due to the government's timely measures, including introduction of stimulus packages. Remittance inflow played a vital role in this regard. The flood situation has been deteriorated further due to continued rise of water level in Brahmaputra, Jomuna and Podda rivers. On the other hand, water level in main rivers of northeastern Meghna basins, excepting the Kushiara River, are in decreasing trend. According to Flood Forecasting and Warning Center, the flash flood is likely to worsen further in Kurigram, Gaibantha, Jamalpur, Bogura, Tangai, Shirajganj, Pabna, Manikganj, Rajpari, Foridpur and Shoryupur districts in the next 24 hours. Meanwhile, the Jomuna River is flowing 66 centimeters above the danger level, causing inundating low-lying chore areas of at least 28 unions under five upazilas of Shirajganj district. A total of 255 more dengue cases were reported across the country in the last 24 hours. Of them, 233 new patients were admitted in Dhaka and 22 in districts outside the capital, a release of the Health Crisis Management and Control Room of Directorate General of Health Services, DGHS, said today. 
A total of 1,257 dengue patients are undergoing treatment at different hospitals and clinics across the country. Among them, 1,120 patients are taking treatment in Taka Division and 137 are hospitalized outside the capital, the release added. Member of the Parliament and former Deputy Minister and Valiant Freedom Fighter Hasibur Rahman Shapun was buried at Shahjadpur Mokdumia graveyard in Shirajganj with state honour. Earlier, his last namaz -e janaza was held at Shahjadpur Pilot High School ground after Juma prayer. His dead body was taken first to Pabna with a helicopter. Later, the body was taken to Shahjadpur residence in Shirajganj. Leaders and workers of Central Awami League, District Awami League, Upazila Awami League and its associate organizations paid tribute to late Hasibur Rahman Shapun, placing wreaths at the coffin. Awami League General Secretary and Road Transport and Bridges Minister Obadul Kadir virtually attended the wreath giving program and recalled the eventful life of Hasibur Rahman Shapun. Earlier, the first namaz -e janaza of Hasibur Rahman Shapun was held in the morning at Gulshan Azad Mosque in the capital. Later, the dead body kept, was kept there till 9 o'clock for paying respects by the mass people. President's Military Secretary Major General Sawa Hussein on behalf of President Mohammad Abdul Hamid and Prime Minister's Military Secretary Major General Nakib Ahmed Chaudhry on behalf of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina paid respect to late Hasibur Rahman Shapun. Besides Speaker Dr. Shirin Shamin Chaudhry, Sergeant at Arms and Awami League Office Secretary Barrister Bipla Borua paid respect on behalf of the Speaker and Bangladesh Awami League. Later, people from all walks of life paid respect to late Hasibur Rahman Shapun. Doctors at a hospital have uh, described veteran politician Tofail Ahmed's health condition as stable. Hours after he was flown to the Indian capital for treatment this afternoon as he suffered a stroke in Bangladesh on August 30. Dr. Arun Garg, head of neurology department at Medanta Multi Super Specialty Hospital in Gulgao, Haryana, about 9 kilometers away from New Delhi, said this. BSS said that he, along with his team, examined the ailing leader and suggested some medical checkups. Meanwhile, Bangladesh High Commissioner in New Delhi, Mohammad Imran, visited Tofail Ahmed, a senior Awami League leader at the hospital. He inquired about his health treatment procedures. Tofail Ahmed was flown to New Delhi this afternoon by an air ambulance, according to his personal aide, Abul Khair. A member of the ruling party's advisory council, Tofail Ahmed, had been undergoing treatment at Square Hospital in Dhaka after suffering a mild stroke on August 30. The 77-year-old politician was elected lawmaker for five times and served as minister in several ministries under Awami League government led by Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. Now international news. U.S. President Joe Biden has said historic investment is needed to deal with the climate crisis as the northeast of the country reels from flash flooding and tornadoes that have killed at least 45 people. The U.S. is facing climate-related destruction across the country and tackling it as a matter of life and death, the president said. New York City and New Jersey saw unprecedented levels of rainfall. Some residents became trapped in flooded basements and cars. Six states suffered loss of life. New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy said at least 23 people had died in his state, most of them stuck in their vehicles as the water rose. At least 14 people lost their lives in New York City, including a two-year-old boy. Eleven of them drowned while trapped in their flooded basements, officials said. Five people died in Pennsylvania while a state trooper in Connecticut was swept away as he responded to a call. Deaths were also reported in Maryland and Virginia. 
President Biden has declared an emergency in both New Jersey and New York, enabling both states to receive federal funding to support local disaster relief efforts. Taliban co-founder Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar will lead a new Afghan government set to be announced soon. Sources in the group said on Friday as its fighters battled forces loyal to the vanquished republic in the Panjshir Valley north of Kabul. Baradar, who heads the Taliban's political office, will be joined by Mullah Mohammad Yaqub, the son of late Taliban co-founder Mullah Omar. And Sheer Mohammad Abbas is in senior positions in the government, three sources said. A Taliban official told Reuters, speaking on condition of anonymity. Haibatullah Akhundzada, the Taliban's supreme religious leader, will focus on religious matters and governance within the framework of Islam, another Taliban source said. Meanwhile, NDTV said announcement about the formation of new Afghan government has now been delayed by a day, quoting Taliban spokesman Zabiullah Mujahid. The Taliban, which seized Kabul on August 15 after sweeping across most of the country, have faced resistance in the Panjshir Valley, where there have been reports of heavy fighting and casualties. COVID-19 global death toll crosses 45 lakh 60,000 and over 22 crore 1 lakh 41,000 people have been infected globally. Besides, more than 19 crore 68 lakh 17,000 people have recovered from the virus so far. Meanwhile, the U.S. has now 4 crore 5 lakh 13,000 confirmed cases and over 6 lakh 62,000 deaths. India has now 3 crore 29 lakh 3,000 confirmed cases and over 4 lakh 39,000 deaths. Bangladesh reported 70 COVID-19 deaths and 3,167 new infections in the last 24 hours. Directorate General of Health Services, DGHS, in its routine daily statement today said the death toll has risen to 26,432 from coronavirus and the tally of infections has risen to 15,10,283. The recovery count rose to 14,42,582 after another 4,697 patients recovered. The statement said 10.76% of 29,438 samples tested positive. DGHS statistics showed of the people infected from the beginning, 95.52% recovered and 1.75% died. The statement said of these 70 deaths, one is between 21 to 30 years, three are between 31 to 40 years, 11 are between 41 to 50 years, 16 are between 51 to 60 years, 21 are between 61 to 70 years, 14 are between 71 to 80 years, and 4 are between 81 to 90 years. 34 out of the 70 people died were male, while 36 were female. DGHS informed that 24 people died in Thaka Division, 15 died in Chattogram Division, 4 died in Ratshahi Division, 12 died in Kulna Division, 4 died in Borishal Division, 8 died in Silat Division and 3 died in Rampo Division. Now news on sports. Bangladesh beat New Zealand by four runs in the nail-biting second T20 match of the five-match series in Dhaka today. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina congratulated Team Bangladesh for this victory. With this victory, the Tiger advanced to the sixth position of ICC T20. On the toss and decided to bat first at Mipur Sheri Bangla National Cricket Stadium. The Tigers scored 141 runs for six in their stipulated 20 overs. Liton Dar scored 33, while Mohamed Niam, Mohamed Naim scored 39, and Mahmudul Riyadh was unbeaten on 37 runs. In reply, New Zealand managed to score 137 runs for five in their stipulated 20 overs. 
the Kiwis captain Tom Latham was unbeaten on 65 runs. Mehdi Hassan and Shakib Al Hassan bagged two wickets each, with Nasim Ahmed took one for Bangladesh. Shakib need one wicket more to become the highest wicket taker in the T20 format, as he touched Lasit Malinga's 107 wickets record. Mahmudullah was adjudged man of the match. To end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Educational institutions may reopen on 12th September. Final decision in a meeting on 5th September. SSA exams to be held in November, HSC in December, says Education Minister. Country's economy to turn around and employment opportunities to be created with opening of three mega projects, Bob the Bridge, Cornerfully Tunnel and Metro Rail next year, commands economists. Remittance service blaze opens in country. Remittances of expatriate Bangladeshis now coming to country within five seconds. Road Transport and Bridges Minister Obadul Kadir inspects BRT construction work in Gazipur. Public sufferings to end after this monsoon, he expects. Water level of Podda, Jomuna and Brahmaputra rivers continue to rise. Flood situation in Kulikram, Gaibantha, Jamalpur, Tangal and Shiraj Gorge deteriorates. Country's corona positivity rate now more or less stable. Infection rate 10.76 in last 24 hours and number of deaths from coronavirus 70. 35 killed in the United States due to flash flood and tornadoes. And Bangladesh defeat New Zealand by four runs in second of five match T20 series. That's all from the news for the moment. Thank you for staying with us. We invite you to watch our 11.30 Bangla News. And we request you to follow health guidelines, wear masks and stay safe from Corona. Khudafiz.